amazing compassion is running. He turned his desire to run a marathon and increased his work at the Commonwealth Bank. What's that? Um, funny story, actually, Billy. I uh, I was uh, part of the first Australian internet banking team. Yeah, um, it was a pretty cool experience. Actually, didn't know anything about IT, but was I was already in the bank, and they said, uh, "Yeah, you have to work in that team." Yeah, so yeah, that's what I did. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thank um, you. Do I have to do the... Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'd actually forgotten about the something nobody knows thing. Um, so I just had a thought. Uh, Eddie and, and Lousy know this, but uh, something that nobody knows about me is that I have lost three keep cups coming to B&I. So, <laughs> um, either leaving them here, left one on the roof of my car the other day. So uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? I know. Was that a video, that bit, Pete? Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, good. Okay. Um, so, uh, the topic of our presentation this week is asset protection. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to formally introduce my colleague, Matthew Carney. So, next slide. Um, so, as you'll see up there on the screen, um, Matthew's practice area is a family law and criminal law. Uh, he's a, a partner of our firm and he, he heads up both of those divisions within Baker Love Lawyers. Uh, he's been a lawyer for 15 years and he is an accredited specialist in family law. Uh, what that means is that the, the Law Society of New South Wales have a program where particular lawyers, if you have been practicing for a certain number of years in, in an area, and you go through a course which is actually quite difficult to complete, then they'll give you a specialist accreditation. There's only a small percentage of lawyers in New South Wales that have that, and um, Matthew's one of those that has it in family law. So, um, yeah, I can highly recommend Matt uh, in that jurisdiction as well as in criminal law. Um, next slide, Deb. Okay, so... Uh, as I said, the, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is asset protection. I'll be discussing the first two of those dot points. Bless you. And um, then Maddie will, will chime in and, and uh, talk about the third area there uh, of divorce. Um, so asset protection. So as lawyers, we, we spend uh, a fair amount of time assisting clients to acquire and dispose of assets, um, whether it be real property or, or business assets. Um, but what I want to focus on today is trying to assist clients with protecting those assets. And it's an often overlooked area until someone, or after the fact, people sort of think about it. But it really is something that you have to think about early. And um, if, if a client's got good advisors around them, then they should also be thinking of this. And it's actually how I came to, to think about doing this topic was a referral from Chris at GC Accountants, send a client over who had recently started in business and uh, had started thinking about asset protection. And it was, uh, got me thinking that that would be a, a, an interesting topic for everyone because it is something that I think, uh, as I say, is easily overlooked and clients really do need to start thinking about how they can protect their assets through the journey uh, as early as possible. And that brings me to the, the, the first dot point, which is the end of the journey, which is um, upon death. So a, a good example of where we see people requiring assistance in asset protection is in what I guess we call in the, in the game high net wealth individuals or couples. Um, typical scenario of mum and dad who have build up uh, quite a bit of wealth over their, their years, number of assets, which you tend to find uh, are unencumbered by the time they get to you. So there's a, quite a, a, a value there. And in our estate planning team, one of the things that we will discuss with them and offer is to do a testamentary trust will. Now, some of you might have heard that phrase before. Um, basically, it's just a, 
a, a fancy type of will. It, it, testamentary trust is a will. It's just a, another sort of label that, that we put on it. And what it does is it puts the assets of the deceased estate into a trust structure. So the big concept that we think about with asset protection is ownership, or in particular, not owning. So um, people tend to uh, have better success at attacking assets and acquiring assets where the person that, that's holding the assets actually has legal ownership of them. But when you hold assets in a trust structure, you don't actually legally own them and therefore it's harder for uh, those to attack the assets. So that's essentially what a testamentary trust will does. It'll hold assets upon death in trust for. And you can do lots of fancy things with testamentary trust wills. You can have a uh, what's called capital protected trust. So what that'll mean is a good example is um, actually we, we had this scenario happen in Baker Love um, before I was in the firm, but one of my previous colleagues mentioned it to me where he had a, uh, uh, I think it was a father uh, was the, the, and there was an only child. That's right. It was a father. Mother had already passed away. Father had quite a bit of uh, assets built up, passed away, left everything to, to the son. And unfortunately, not long after that, the son went bankrupt and all of the creditors got the whole of the estate, a whole lot of it. It was worth, I, I can't remember exactly, it was quite a bit of money. The testamentary trust will could potentially protect that scenario because if they'd established a testamentary trust, then the creditors couldn't actually claim those assets because the beneficiary wouldn't have held the legal interest in them and they would have been held in trust. So that's a really simple real life example of where that can, can um, benefit clients. Second one, and this goes to what I just mentioned before about uh, bankruptcy. So uh, I used to do quite a bit of insolvency and bankruptcy work as a lawyer. Don't do that much now, but uh, in that role, it was all about trying to find ways to attack assets. So it was, I guess, good learning for me to, on that side of the fence. And the key thing, as I said earlier, in respect to, uh, to the, the bankruptcy scenario is trying to ensure that you separate ownership from risk, okay? Because it's generally those individuals who practice in certain professions that are risky uh, and are therefore potentially under attack. So building and construction is one that you see a lot of, lot of companies go under. Generally when companies go under, it follows that the directors will, will go bankrupt. So what you want to do in that scenario, and this is a discussion we had with, with GC's client, is separating ownership of assets from the, the one of the two spouses who, who incurs all of the risk. So that's around working with the accountant to come up with good corporate and trust structures so that in the event that something was to happen and, and there were things out of that person's control that meant that they, they did have to declare bankruptcy, that the trustee in bankruptcy couldn't attack any or all of the assets. Um, it's quite technical in how that works, but I hope that just sort of gives you a bit of a snapshot on, on what we can do. At this point, I'm just going to hand over to, to Matthew to talk about another context, which is in the situation of a divorce. That's right. And, uh... Family law-wise, there's um, an option that you have in terms of contracting out of the ability of someone to <coughs> your assets if separation does take place, and that's by way of a financial agreement. So a financial agreement is commonly known as a prenup, and you can do a financial agreement in any circumstance, de facto, married, prior to either of those relationships taking place, and even during the relationship. So just because you're married doesn't mean that you can't enter into a financial agreement during that marriage as well. So there's two scenarios that we would normally look at, um, or main scenarios that we would look at with financial agreements, and that is protecting your own assets. So if you're coming into a relationship, usually it's a, a second marriage, you've built up your assets, you have children, you want to have that uh, generational wealth passing down to your children in circumstances where both parties have their own assets, then you can enter into financial agreements to record your intention and get it done properly. Um, it's legally enforceable and it's a very safe planning tool um, for married couples or de facto couples to make sure that your intentions are followed through. Uh, the other scenario that we look at, and it's becoming more uh, sorry, more popular, 
is for complex uh, intergenerational companies that want to pass down that generational wealth. And essentially what we can do is we can utilize financial agreements as a planning tool to make sure that that, um, that company structure is passed down from parents to children and that financial agreement is a tool to make sure uh, that that is protected moving forward. Uh, usually that's reserved for quite high wealth clients. Um, it is a complex area, but it is an option that's available and it's a very useful um, option that's there. One of the reasons why we would do that is because statistically less than 7% of companies pass down through more than four generations. So it's a really high um, rate where companies will collapse and won't be able to pass that down through generations. So um, financial agreements, very useful tool. Um, and something to keep in mind for the right clients. Thanks, Matty. Um, so just finally, um, that's, I'm going to wrap up there, but the one final point I wanted to make is what we try and do at Baker Love is have a holistic approach to clients' needs. So that's one of the reasons I had Matty come in today. I wanted to sort of demonstrate how our team works together. So new clients that come on board that have a particular need, we look at it from a commercial, corporate, point of view, as well as looking at it from a family law and estate planning perspective. So that's it. Thanks very much.